Hello everyone and welcome to the next video on the topic of relationships between two quantities. In this video I will take up the topic of inverse proportion. Inverse proportion problems are problems where there are two quantities whose values are related such that scaling the value of one of them by a factor, that means multiplying the value of one of them by a number, forces the scaling of the value of the other by the inverse of the same factor. Now, when we talk about inverses, if 2 is a factor, it means we are multiplying by it. The inverse of 2 is 1 half. So now, we are finding half of something, which is the same as division by 2. So here, when we say scaling the value of one of them by a factor, that means multiplying the value of one of them by a number, such as multiplying it by 2. This forces the scaling of the value of the other by the inverse of the same factor. So we end up multiplying the value of the other by the inverse of 2. We end up multiplying it by 1 half, which is the same as dividing by 2. What this means is that if you multiply the value of one of these quantities by a number, the value of the other quantity gets divided by the same number. You double one, the other one goes down to half its value. If you triple the value of one, the value of the other goes down to one third of its value. These kinds of relationships are called inverse proportion problems and the standard form of the equation for inverse proportion is Q2 is equal to a constant divided by Q1. As usual, a constant has a fixed value for a given problem. To explain how this equation captures the meaning of inverse proportion problems, let's take a look at some examples. Let's say Q2 is equal to 40 divided by Q1. In this case, K has the fixed value of 40. Now, let's say that Q1 is 4. And therefore, Q2 will be 40 divided by 4 or 10. If we increase the value of Q1 by a factor of 5, so now we are dividing by 20 then the value of Q2 gets divided by 5. You notice here that Q1 got multiplied by 5 from 4 to 20. And Q2 got divided by 5 from 10 to 2. This should make sense because if you divide by something that's 5 times larger, your answer will be 5 times smaller. Now, as usual, k can have any form that it wants to, uh, to take. The key is that you're dividing by q1 on the right side. k could be negative k. If k is 5, then negative k is negative 5, which is a constant. It could be root k. So it makes no difference what form k takes. The key is that you're dividing by q1 on the right side. Next, we have the conservation form, and this one says that there are two quantities whose values are related such that their product is constant. And you can, if you think about it, you notice that it does make sense. If we have the situation where something doubles and the other gets divided by two, then multiplying them will cancel out that, those two effects. The conservation form is q2 times q1 is equal to a constant. And as usual, you notice how the terminology makes sense. If something is constant, then its value doesn't change. And in some sense, we can say that the value is conserved. We can go from the standard form 
to the conservation form by rearranging the equation. Here we take division by Q1 on the right side and turn it into multiplication by Q1 on the left side. The key to going to the conservation form is to isolate the K. Now we can say a number of things about inverse proportion problems. I will not discuss change in the value of the two quantities because the relationship is not simple. However, symmetry does exist. As usual, symmetry answers the question that if Q2 is inversely proportional to Q1, does it mean that Q1 is inversely proportional to Q2? Note that these two are not the same. So if Q2 is inversely proportional to Q1, that means if I double Q1, then Q2 doubles. The question is, does it work the other way? If I double Q2, does that also mean that Q1 gets divided by 2? So uh, again, let me repeat that. Uh, I might have said multiply, multiply. If I multiply Q1 by 2, let's say that Q2 gets divided by 2. Now, does it work the other way? If I multiply Q2 by 2, does it mean Q1 gets divided by 2? That may or may not be the case. Of course, for inverse proportion problems, that is the case. But you cannot just be sure uh, just because you think that that has to be the case. There are relationships where symmetry doesn't exist. But for inverse proportion problems, symmetry does exist. And we can actually show this. Suppose Q2 is inversely proportional to Q1. That means Q2 is equal to K divided by Q1. Now rearrange the equation for Q1. And that shows that Q1 is inversely proportional to Q2. As an example of an inverse proportion problem, suppose that I want to go from travel from Toronto to Montreal, which has a fixed distance of about 506 kilometers. The equation for this problem is V equals 506 divided by T, where V is the speed of travel and T is the travel time. Now, this equation has the form of inverse proportion problems. Here, Q2 is V. K is 506. Q1 is T. And because I can tell that the relationship between V and T is inverse proportion by just looking at it, I can make the following conclusions very quickly. If I double my speed, travel time gets divided by 2. If I go at half the speed, it will take me twice longer to get to Montreal. And it works the other way. If it did take me twice longer, then I must have driven at half the speed. I can also say that the product of the speed and travel time is fixed, and it's equal to the distance covered comes from the conservation form, and it's somewhat obvious. Thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, I will take up the topic of linear equations.